Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a discovery of a potential planet, possibly even in a habitable zone, around one of the most exciting star systems next to us. The system currently known as Rigelkintorus and Toliman, although that's not a name that a lot of us have heard of before. These two stars are more commonly known as Alpha Centauri, and that's probably the name that I'm going to be using for the rest of the video because the other two names are kind of confusing. Now, I'm sure you have heard of these stars before because that's basically the closest star system to us. The system of Alpha Centauri is technically actually connected to the neighbor Proxima Centauri, which can be barely made out right here where the circle is located. And together Alpha Centauri stars and Proxima Centauri form this somewhat interesting union with Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B orbiting around one another every 79.9 years, with the average distance between these two stars being equivalent to the distance from the Sun to Uranus, roughly around 18 astronomical units. Whereas Proxima Centauri is much farther away at about 13,000 astronomical units or about 0.2 light years away. And though mostly we've talked about Proxima Centauri so far because we've already confirmed two planets here, with one being in the habitable zone of the star itself, the scientists have always been more excited about trying to find something in the Alpha Centauri because being the closest star system to us, it's also the closest star system with the stars very similar to our Sun, so-called solar analogs. The stars that are not too active, that don't really produce a lot of flares, and the stars that are generally mild enough to provide necessary conditions for long-term habitability of different planets. And here is a picture that sort of demonstrates how these stars compare. We have the Sun, we have the larger Alpha Centauri A, or the Rigel Centaurus as it's known, with a mass of about 1.1 masses of the Sun, and the luminosity that's about 50% higher than the Sun. Then we have the slightly smaller Toliman, with the size of about 0.9 masses of the Sun, and only about half the luminosity of the Sun, and lastly we have the Proxima Centauri, a typical M-type dwarf. And though Proxima Centauri is smaller, it's also a lot more active and produces a lot more extremely powerful flares many of which have been detected in the last few years. And so naturally discovering something around the Sun-like stars is way, way more exciting. Which is why in the last few years there have been a few announcements of possible planets. One of the first announcements was back in 2012, but within three years, several studies confirmed that it was nothing but the noise in the data. The planet most likely did not exist. Then, only a year later, the scientists observed an unusual passage of another possible planet, this was basically a shadow of a planet passing in front of a star, which did suggest that there could be an object orbiting one of the stars here. Now this hasn't of course been confirmed yet, but if confirmed this would be a really really tight planet orbiting the Alpha Centauri b, also known as Toliman. And surprisingly this was an object with a total size of about 94 size of planet Earth, but the orbit here would be really, really close to the parent star. A single orbit here only takes about 20 days. This implies that this would be some sort of a lava world. This of course has never been confirmed since, and it's been over 7 or actually 8 years now, and this means that it could also have been a false detection. Many of these have happened in the past, so this wouldn't really be the first. But because this is such an exciting star system, and because this is our neighbor, this has not stopped scientists in trying to discover more potential planets. And the most recent analysis has actually used something very different, something that has never really been used in such a way, and something that potentially discovered another planet, and this time maybe in the habitable zone of the star system. Now because this is our neighbor and because the star is pretty bright in the night skies, this actually creates a lot of problems for certain techniques in trying to detect planets around it. But there is one technique that we can definitely use on this star system, something that has also been used in the solar system quite a lot with our own sun. The method that's sometimes known as thermal chronography. It's essentially when you block the central object, in this case it's the sun, and then try to look for certain other objects, bright and possibly hot objects, in the vicinity. This is normally how we look at comets approaching the sun, and this is normally how we also discover certain objects, such as this one right here once again, that are both really close to the sun and also produce a lot of heat that's otherwise invisible because the sun is really really bright and essentially overshadows their heat. And so if we block a star and then look at it in infrared imaging, for example, we can actually see heat generated around the star system. And because we know that planets and pretty much all objects do produce heat simply by reflecting or even through generation of heat on the inside, 
We can usually see them assuming that nothing blocks their heat or their emissions. And back in 2019, the famous Breakthrough Listen, or in this case one of the Breakthrough Initiatives, known as Breakthrough Watch, began its collaboration with the European Southern Observatory and allowed the scientists to use a new tool known as Visor, which stands for a Very Large Telescope Infrared Imager. You can learn more about this particular tool in the article in the description below. And this allowed the scientists to now directly image some of the nearby stars, specifically stars within about 20 light years away from us, and to look at their infrared signatures. The main purpose, of course, being discovering new planets. Now, after about a year and a half, we now have one of the most exciting reports, a planet in the habitable zone from the closest star system to us. The planet that's visible in this image right here as this relatively large heat spot in the image produced by the visor tool. Now remember, this is still a preliminary discovery, but if this is confirmed and if this is indeed a planet orbiting in the star system, this would be a planet similar in mass to Neptune and would actually be right in the middle of the habitable zone, meaning that it would have conditions necessary for liquid water to exist. But it's also important to know here that a lot of other artifacts were discovered in these images, some which you can see in the image where the arrows are pointing, which obviously suggests that this is not a conclusive result just yet, and there could be a lot of interpretations to what it is that we're looking at here. Specifically, the spot that's referred to as C1 or Candidate 1 could also be cosmic dust, or really hot cosmic dust. It can also be some sort of reflection based on something else in the background. Or, for all we know, it could also be a distant object just in the right location where the scientists were looking at. In other words, it doesn't actually confirm yet that this is a planet, but there is a way to confirm this. If we look at the star again in the next few days or possibly the next few months, and if we discover that this object shifted a little bit and is definitely orbiting something, we know for a fact that this is probably a planet. Because so far this is actually only based on 100 hours of observations. We'll need to do a lot more observations, possibly in the next few months, to see if this is really there. But also based on the amount of heat detected coming from this object, it most likely is not some sort of a terrestrial planet. And instead is more likely to be some sort of a gas planet, possibly even a gas giant. Although if it is some sort of a massive planet, it's more likely we would have found it a long time ago because normally we can see these massive objects because of their effects on the star. They normally shift the star's motion across the night skies quite a lot. Because we haven't seen anything like this from Alpha Centauri, this planet is probably a lot less massive. But it still doesn't mean that it's a terrestrial planet. Because as of now, it does seem like the planet is reflecting a lot of the heat from the star, which of course suggests that it's probably larger than planet Earth and seems to be emitting a lot of heat as well. But more importantly, this is a huge milestone for the project itself. It only began operating a year and a half ago, and it's already collected a lot of useful data and has potentially discovered a habitable planet in a nearby star system. And of course, if confirmed, this would be one of the most exciting discoveries of the last few years. Which of course would also make the Alpha Centauri and the Proxima Centauri systems as essentially some of the most interesting systems in the vicinity. It would mean that both of them contain planets in the habitable zone, which at least statistically speaking would mean that pretty much most of the stars out there would have something in their habitable zones as well. But it's also important to remember that we've always wanted to find planets around binary systems, mostly because we want to learn and we want to understand how these planets survive for billions of years. It's generally really hard for stable orbits to form in binary systems, and for example, for both stars here, the stable orbits are only within about 2.8 astronomical units, with the habitable zone for the smaller star being within 1.3 astronomical units, for the larger star almost reaching that limit at 2.2 astronomical units. This of course implies that if this particular planet exists in the star system, it's basically sort of already at the limit of where a stable orbit can form in the star system. If it's a little bit farther away, or if its orbit is eccentric, it does have a high chance of suddenly getting kicked out of the star system and basically becoming a rogue planet or colliding with the stars. And so once again, if this particular planet is confirmed and if it truly exists out there, this would be one of the most exciting and possibly one of the luckiest discoveries we've made in the last decade. A very strange, a very unusual, and a very peculiar object that really shouldn't actually even exist, but seems to exist nevertheless. But it will take a few months to confirm all of this, and possibly even longer. So for now, we don't really know if it's truly there, or if it's some warm dust, or possibly some other reflection coming from the star 
that was maybe formed by some sort of a cometary tail or some other activity. Not so different of course from what we're seeing right here when the comet passes really close to the sun itself. So definitely exciting, but we just have to wait and see what happens with this. Until we actually find out what's happening, well that's pretty much it. Check out the paper in the description below, check out all of the other relevant links there as well, and subscribe if you still haven't shared this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.